Hello and welcome to the eighth edition of Iberodox. I am Mar Felices, Iberodox director. Mm -hmm. I am a woman with short uh, graying hair and behind me there is a poster with a logo of Iberodox. I am extremely delighted to be here tonight with Ricardo Isca, uh, director of Lo Soñado y Lo Vivido, and Noem Mendele, director of Scottish Documentary Institute. Ricardo was our guest of honor on the fifth edition of the festival when he gave us a very exciting masterclass at SDI. He's also the person who I can blame for my passion for documentaries. And I'm just one of the hundreds of students that today are document documentary lovers, thanks to his ability to inspire others. So welcome back, Ricardo. And I hope you will be involved in the festival for many more years. Ricardo's film, Dreamed and Lived, uh, will be uh, still available until the 2nd of May. Uh, it is free on our online platform in the on-demand, and it is available in the UK, Ireland, Spain, Portugal, and Latin America. Just to mention to the audience that this Q&A will take around 20 minutes, will be in English, and will be recorded. To ask any question uh, to Ricardo, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, and I will read them to the questions to Ricardo. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being here with us today, and uh, Noé, please, uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's uh, a delight to be back in Iberodox, and uh, just before I get on, I just would like to say that I'm Noe Mandel, director of Scottish Documentary Institute, and I'm a middle-aged woman, kind of, you know, short black hair, um, looking kind of, you know, a bit tired at this time of the day, but uh, delighted otherwise to be here. So we'll keep smiling, especially that today uh, I'm talking to Ricardo, and I feel it's a continuation of the conversation that we had in uh, 2017, was it kind of, you know? Yes, um, But Ricardo, very welcome again to virtual Scotland. Thank you very much. Uh, no, uh, let me introduce myself. I am Ricardo Iscar. I'm a filmmaker and also a professor at the university. Uh, I am also, well, I am almost, I am already 60 years old and uh, my hair is long and white. Uh, I didn't shave uh, since uh, two days ago. I am dressed in blue and behind me, there are some books and, and videos and a lot of things in a big disorder. It's a kind of library. <laughs> So well, Ricardo, when... I think you letting us down with the disorder behind kind of, you know, you because, uh, um, you know, you were so methodical kind of, you know, in your film, kind of tidying up everything. But I was expecting to see really kind of, you know, clean shelves and uh, everything kind of being ordered. So <laughs> I'm delighted to see that chaos has taken <laughs> over again. Uh, it shows that your creative mind is still there. Mm -hmm. Ricardo, I loved the film um, as ever. I mean, in your past films, um, you spend a lot of time and energy kind of observing people kind of, you know, and seeing their kind of day to day uh, process in, the, mm -hmm. in their lives or in their work. But I guess this is the first time where you're actually kind of spending time following you yourself, turning the camera on you to mm. see this kind of day to day kind of in a routine and what it means. Was mm. that terribly difficult to turn the camera around? Hmm. Well, I, I, I did it uh, one time. I went also to, uh, uh, to um, Buenos Aires and I made a kind of uh, small diary also something like a half an hour, like uh, this one, which is uh, 42 minutes, 43. And uh, um, well, I started uh, just putting the camera and filming something because a, a Spanish musician asked me to send him some uh, material because he wanted to make a, a kind of video uh, with contribution from some people. So I started to film with, uh, with uh, a mobile phone 
and I didn't like it, and I took the camera, and I thought, okay, why I don't do this for, for myself? Why I don't continue? And looking for, for a certain aesthetic, and, and I thought also that, uh, uh, that the curfew was a very strange time, but uh, it could uh, uh, go away quite soon after a few months, so maybe it's a good moment to, uh, to put some reflections, to put also to uh, occupy myself with uh, creativity. And uh, so yes, just start to film. And after uh, some days, I start to think about the structure and to put some elements of humor and, and to involve all, all the, the family. Uh, the most difficult things is always to find the, the, the voiceover, to find the, the right distance. Mm -hmm. uh, between uh, reflection, between uh, serious thoughts uh, and uh, humor sequences. And mm -hmm. to, to find the, the right distance is always uh, one of the most important uh, items in, in documentary, I think. Mm -hmm. When um, you came to Edinburgh, already you kind of showed a lot of uh, um, obsession, let's say, with um, archive footage and especially kind of memories back to childhood. I mean, I remember you talking about uh, footage shot by your dad uh, um, when, when he was young and, uh, and you kind of, you know, little boy, etc. And now, of course, it's kind of, you know, the opposite. It's kind of, I was going to say you as, a, as an older man and uh, your son as kind of, you know, a, a young boy. But I can see how those kind of memories kind of you know slowly you kind of engaging with it and working through it but how did you manage or how did you mix that with uh, the memories of uh, films that were you know you engaged with how did you match kind of you know the two things because uh, for me everything is, is the same everything is connected uh, when I see uh, the Super 8 uh, images of my parents, and uh, well, I, I think that uh, I start to love uh, films, not only by watching films in the television or in the cinema, but also by watching uh, my parents' films. Uh, and I remember when I was uh, a boy that my father used to, to show us a, a, a Charlie Chaplin film in an eight millimeters, not super, eight millimeters projector. And I was enchanted with uh, these images. So I always connected my, my father with, uh, with this uh, super eight and eight millimeter film. And, uh, and it's true that when, now when I watch these images, I realized that I am older than my parents in, in these images. So myself also became uh, old in uh, 60 years. So, uh, and I had, I already had some experience in, in filmmaking and in life, so I maybe it's the time to uh, to recall uh, some parts of, of the life, uh, because maybe years uh, ago I couldn't do it. I would be, well, I would feel very ashamed to do this. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now I. I feel more confident, and um, why and do I you say you would have felt ashamed? Sorry. Why do you say you would have felt ashamed? Because it's very in theme, and because it could be pretentious to mm. to think that I have uh, things to tell about my past and about my, my family, but uh, uh, but the years, you know, time is the biggest constructor in in filmmaking. So I have already. <laughs> Um, more time in me and more memories and and, and, I, and I think the time is passing and I want to to reflect on, on this and to make maybe also personal films because if I don't do them now I will never do do it <laughs> but that also links up with your obsession of uh, time in uh, in cinema I mean mm. how um, you know that that uh, need that you've got in is you know, capturing kind of time passing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the present. I mean, I remember you quoting Jean Rouge kind of, you know, in, uh, you know, related to Cinetrans. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, do you feel that um, the lockdown was such kind of Cinetrans moment mm -hmm. for you? Mm -hmm. 
of course, it's, uh, it's very interesting what you say. I never thought that uh, curfew was a uh, uh, cine trans, but, uh, but yes, you're right. It, it was at the end because we were living in a bubble. And but at the same time, it made me uh, to reflect on what we were living mm -hmm. uh, uh, about the concept of, uh, you know, in the curfew, I, I, I realized like uh, many people that the, the things, the state, the civilization, everything that you thought it was a uh, real solid, it wasn't. Everything was shaking. So at the end of the thing, I say that we are in a in a in a spaceship. We are in a in a travel. And the world is like a spaceship, and everything is changing continuously. Everything is in transformation. So uh, that is why I want to reflect uh, on this. It was obvious, and uh, and yes, we in the coffee we were living in a kind of of, of trance. Uh, of mm. course, yes, you're right. I never thought it like this, but. At the end, it was like this. Mm. It's also interesting that, uh, um, I mean, you become very philosophical uh, about, you know, the meaning of life, really, and the meaning of, of death, kind of, you know, through, um, yeah, through living that, you know, experiencing that kind of lockdown. Um, and it's interesting that uh, somehow, the other politics kind of, you know, disappear kind of, you know, out of our way of thinking. I mean, you know, Barcelona, just like Scotland, uh, has very much been kind of, uh, um, you know, being challenged around the idea of independence, etc. So all those big, big debates, all those kind of arguments, kind of, you know, all the kind of political corruption, etc. kind of, you know, all that somehow has disappeared and, uh, and again kind of didn't appear in your film mm. you know I, I think what it became very important at the end was the family it was uh, to survive and was uh, the family uh, was um, to be alive to clean everything and to take care of the family and of your mother or your father of your sons or, mm -hmm. and um, and also to reflect about what was the reaction of the state not of in the uh, how how the state tried to react and to and to save us, but also how the cap capitalist system was trying to to save uh, itself. Mm -hmm. So in the film there is one one uh, sequence where I go to to the shopping center and there are some uh, commercials, some publicity of banks and and selling masks and and selling uh, gloves. So that was that happens very very fast very quickly. So the uh, as um, Marx used to say, you know, the capitalist system uh, reacted first, and I was very surprised in uh, about this. So the other uh, um, subject like uh, like in uh, uh, independence or something like this was uh, not important at all, you know, and it still is not so important because. Uh, there are, uh, I think, biggest issues than than that. For me, it was more the capitalist system, and uh, and the family, and to realize that um, every instant is a treasure, and you have to live the the moment, and to uh, to try to realize it that this um, is a treasure. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the moment. We have some questions now. Huh? And again i mean again in um we'll, we'll come back to the questions kind of you know um afterwards okay um i mean what i also like kind of you know in your film is the way kind of your your camera is uh, um, capturing kind of you know um the details of a family life but at the same time kind of you know quite uh, um 
curious about the neighbors, um, you know, <laughs> which, uh, you know, we all turned into kind of peeping toms, you know, yeah. looking at in a way which was never that, uh, you know, we always speak of old ladies behind their curtains, but, you know, the curtains went out of the window and everyone was looking at everyone. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm wondering what you are trying to kind of to say with, you know, with those shots in your film. Hmm. Uh, we we live in a, a in a in a city, but uh, this city is a kind of how do you say? Um, you know how do you say where the bees are? You know, like uh, how do you say where the bees uh, are living? I mean, we live all together in a way, huh? and mm -hmm. we are in the same adventure. Uh, we humans. And to observe uh, the others, this is something that I have been doing since I was a boy. Uh, when I was living in my mother's house, I was watching the neighbors because I, we were high and they were a little bit lower. So I was always watching the neighbors. And I think we all do it. Uh, the most interesting thing in the desert, told me once one Tuareg, is to see a human being. Because <laughs> if not, the desert is... Uh, it's empty. So the thing starts to be more interesting when somebody appears. So that's why I, I, I do it, to watch the others, to, uh, to see them and to, to imagine stories. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is the reason. <laughs> and obviously you as a little boy, you experience your dad filming you with his kind of you know, Super 8 camera. Mm. But um, now kind of you know it's your little boy kind of you know being filmed yeah. but with a very different intensity uh than you were filmed yourself <laughs> um i mean do you find that there's some kind of you know how do you set up boundaries kind of you know uh in the sense of you know where you could be filming all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. well, well, well what i found is that uh with the years uh, you start to to make the same actions as your parents were doing uh, <laughs> and and, uh, and i think that uh, my sons they are observing me as a father somebody all somebody who is protecting them but um, one year they will feel the same uh, i yes i i try i try to catch the moments and um, to to catch uh, the time that's uh, what I'm trying to do with with them, and uh, uh, now with these small cameras, I, I, I just bought a very small uh, camera that I can film in in 4K, just to not to make pictures but to to film a little bit. And these small moments that they you cannot take a very big camera, but a very small camera, and you can cut them. No? Uh, yeah, yeah. But that's it. But does the family sometimes say enough? Kind of, you know, we don't want to be filmed anymore. Yes, 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 yes. You're right. <laughs> because my my little son, two, two years old, uh, at the time when I was shooting this film, he was one year old. Uh, he was saying to me, "No, no more pictures. No camera. No camera. No." Yes, he was a little bit tired. Uh, but now, uh, a few days ago, I was filming him. Uh, put him uh, um, the Ninth Symphony from Beethoven, mm -hmm. and I, I filmed him, and that was quite uh, amazing to see a small boy listen for the first time the Ninth Symphony. That is like a very impressive film. But yes, they, they got tired, and my and the other son who was uh, 15 years old, he, uh, he didn't like that I was filming him um, uh, playing with the PlayStation. Of course not. <laughs> but, but that is what he's doing usually. So, yeah, yeah. So yes, so you've got to get kind of release forms from them, basically. Yeah. Um, we've got questions from uh, Marcos, who basically said that he, uh, he attended the uh, masterclass so, uh, with SDI kind of in 2017. He's asking about your film Air. How is it going? Yeah, so Air is a film about uh, free diving, 
and uh, the main characters they are uh, two free divers uh, one from algeria and one from from spain and uh, it's a film about uh, uh, breath and uh, it was uh, i started the film before the COVID in 1916 but i think this film is not very uh, very accurate to the times we are living in um, because it's about the same about the the, the breath as a, as a condition of life and how important it is no? and uh, i finished already the editing still i, I need to find uh, resources to make the uh, sound mix and the color uh, correction but the editing is uh, already finished i'm quite uh, happy with with the film i think it reflect what i what i intended and uh, we, we made this film only with uh, a little crowdfunding with uh, 6,000 euros. And the rest was uh, with uh, my family. Again, all the family was involved in the, in the film. And it was really a, a very big effort because we were shooting in, in Ratan, in Honduras, in, in Turkey, in the Red Sea, in Dahab, and uh, where, where else? Also in Nice, in World Championships and with underwater images. But um, it, it was hard, but I'm quite happy now with the result. Thank well, you, Marcos. We, we look forward to see it in cinema because I'm sure it must be spectacular. To, yes, uh... in cinema looks nice, yes. <laughs> so we've got another kind of you know, question from uh, Marcus um, asking, did the pandemic help you to be more inspired to create? Did you feel more creative during this pandemic period? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Or was this movie that you've made just a way of escaping? I think both. I think both. Uh, you feel more creative mm, in the time that you start to to stop doing nothing. And, to, and you think, OK, you have to do what you have to do, eh? what you can do. And what I can do is uh, to write or to or to film. And in this moment, you start to find that uh, you have one target that you you are here to do something. I felt then more useful. I felt I, I had uh, a target. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but if I would not have had the pandemic, I would uh, continue with uh, other film or with other, other project. Um, so the pandemic uh, created the situation uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I had to react. Uh, I think <laughs> many, many people were doing this with uh, music or with films. Now the problem is that uh, this film is very difficult to to show it in, in festivals because uh, maybe many festivals they have a lot of films about the the COVID and the pandemic situation. So uh, it's, it's not easy, even though um, this is an excuse in the film, the pandemic to speak about uh, about time and about life, about memories and about uh, about the death and about um, the fragility of our uh, life, also the fragility of our uh, world and our uh, global system. Mm? Yeah, I mean, I would say that, uh, um, you know, such a film kind of, you know, is very welcome to an audience because it's not about the process of, uh, uh, it's not a, a diary of what the pandemic happened or, mm -hmm. you know, in, in Barcelona. It, it, as you say, it's a philosophical journey, yeah. which uh, most of us had to take in different ways and mm. to engage with yours allow us also the space to think about our own kind of you know philosophical journey during this period yes yes and that's, that's right. universal <laughs> yeah yes that right and it was also a moment to reflect about uh, about the times the, the years you have passed the years you have uh, about the people who are around you the people you 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 miss or people who are sick because life became very precious and very fragile and about um, what you have done and what you have not done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Mm. And I mean, the edition of um, Iberodoc this year is Art as a Need. I mean, do do you feel that, you know, the making of this film has been kind of therapeutic? It's been kind of, uh, um, yeah, has been a need for you? A need? Yeah. Uh, at, at the beginning, not, but now, yes. Now I'm very happy. When I saw the film to my to one of my brothers and then to my mother and to my son, uh, because the reactions, I understood that that was something important also for them. So it, then it became important for me because it's not enough to share some thoughts. These thoughts, the value they get, they, they get it because some other people, they can appreciate it. So I didn't feel alone. And uh, now uh, everything that I reflected in, in this film became more truth because uh, also my, my mother disappeared last uh, last week. So she appeared in this film one, one year ago, uh, being 90, and I was talking about her, about my family, my brothers, my father. And um, so it, this is not a fiction. This is it was the real life. And I now I was thinking during these days that um, happy I, I made this film. Mm. Happy they are there in this yeah. film. So there, you control the entire family under one frame. <laughs> yeah, in a way, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we're coming to the end of uh, um, our session. It's kind of you know just a very brief kind of uh, uh, encounter, a brief conversation. But hopefully, Ricardo will be able to have you back in Scotland with the next film. Uh, so anyone out there who wants to kind of help financially to get that color correction, <laughs> yeah, yes. please come yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we want to see that film one way or another. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, no, I, I thank you. It's always uh, a pleasure to talk with you. And I want to thank you, Ibero Dogs, for choosing the film and to show it to, 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 to the people because, um, well, I think films, uh, they talk to some people and uh, it's, it's always beautiful to share these moments. No? So Absolutely. thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ricardo. Ma, I think it's all back to you now. Uh, oh, so did you feel that somehow you closed the circles with him, with the film? One hmm. last question, sorry, Ma. Yeah. Okay, well, I mute well, myself. Yeah, it, this is also a very good question because um, it's true that uh, in the film, I talk about a few projects that I was not able to, to direct or to realize. And still, there, there are more because uh, you know, know it, that we have uh, some projects, and it's not that we can do all of them. As Godard was saying, we make the films we can, not the things we want. Huh? Yes. And uh, it's true that these two projects that I mentioned in the film, the one about the the, um, the Spanish Republicans, and the one about the two RX about Mano de Jack. Um, I was not able to, to do them and I, I felt always obliged uh, to the people and uh, kind of um, of, uh, of um, uh, putting end to this kind of guilty and was at least to give them some moment to exist to this person and to these images so they will not disappear forever. That's a little bit my, my dream. So yes, that's very beautiful, and it's a really good solution to uh, the suspended films until yeah. one day they'll be done. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Thank well, thank thank you very much, uh, both for being here. Just just to remind the audience that uh, Ricardo's uh, film Dreams and Live will be still available until the second of May. Uh, when uh, our edition goes to an end uh, this year. 
Um, yeah, and tomorrow we have Lupe Perez Garcia Masterclass. That mm. I believe Ricardo knows very well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> great, Lupe. Yes, yeah, so so yes, uh, you are all very welcome to to join us tomorrow for the masterclass at uh, Scottish Documentary Institute with Noem Mendele again, director. So thank you very much, uh, both of you and and all the people that join us for this Q and A. Thank you, Mara, and thank you. Thank Noe. you. Bye bye. Bye.